Algebra 1 EOC Review, Data and Statistics. You need to have two things um, as you watch this video. You need to have our EOC Review Notes Packet, and you need to have our Algebra 1 EOC Pretest. You also need to realize that you will need to pause this video many times because I'm going to go through the examples and the information quickly. So make sure that you pause and understand and get down all the work and the notes that you need to. All right, so let's look at some data and statistic topics that will probably show up on the Algebra 1 EOC. The first is what we call our measures of center, our mean, median, and our mode. So a mean is the average of the data set. Remember, you're going to add the numbers and divide by the number of items that you have. The median is the middle number, and so to find it, you're going to place the, order, the numbers in order first and then find the middle. The mode is a value that appears the most. Not all data sets have a mode. And the range is the difference between the highest and the lowest number in the data set. Now look at your notes packet and let's look at this um, data set. So to find the mean, we're going to add them up and divide by the number of values, which is 5. First, you want to list them in order. Then you'll add them up and divide by 5. Sometimes you will end up with the decimal. The average will be a decimal, and in this case, our, our mean is 8.6. Now for the median, one method to find the middle is after you have them arranged in order number, then you just start by working your way in. So you're going to cross off the numbers at the end. So the 7 and the 10, the 8 and the 9, and you're working your way to find the middle number, which in this case is 9. And you can see that I have it circled. So our median is 9. Mode is a number, um, if any, that shows up the most frequently. And in this data set, it is 9. And then our range will be our highest value um, subtracting our lowest. So the difference between those. So our range is only a range of 3 in this data set. <clears throat> now, look and see, what if a score of 4 was added to the data set? 4 is called an outlier. An outlier is a piece of data that is significantly higher or lower than the rest of the data. So let's see how it affects this set. So I'm going to put it in order, and now with the value of 4. I'm going to add them up and divide by 6, because I now have... Notice that my mean, my average, is now lower. My median will be my middle number, so I'm going to start at the ends and cross them off and work my way to the middle. So the middle will be in between 8 and 9. So I'm going to add 8 and 9, which is 17, and divide it by 2 to find the middle. So my median is 8.5. My mode is 9, so I'll take the different, I'm sorry, see which value shows up the most, which is still 9, and then the range. <clears throat> so let's take a look. Notice that between the two data sets, the mean is significantly impacted by the outlier, so the mean is less. The median is impacted, um, but sometimes it may not be. The mode was not affected, and then the data um, is more spread out with an outlier, and that usually happens every time. Now, go to your EOC pretest packet and turn to number four, and let's work that together. So the table shows the distances that schools will travel to attend a field trip to the state capitol. School number seven, which is not in the table, only has 15 miles to travel, which is much less than the other schools. If the outlier is added to the data, which is a true statement about how it changes the data in the table, select all the statements. So we need to do a bit of work to figure out these answers. The first thing is we need to figure those measures of center, mean, median, mode, and range for our first data set. And the data we're looking at is the distance traveled. So we'll find the mean, we will add them up, and divide by 6. That will give us an average um, of 322.5 miles. Notice when we write those values in order, um, from small to large, then we've got a middle in between 380-380. So if your middle 
is in between the same numbers, then that is your median. The mode is the one that shows up the most, which is also 380, and then our range will be 275. Now let's add that outlier. So you can see I've written our new data set <clears throat> with the 15. So I'm going to add those up now to find my mean and divide by, in this case, 7. So my average is 278.6. That's the mean. The median is still 380. Our, my mode is still 380. My range, however, has changed. My range has increased. So now I'm going to look at my choices. The data is less spread. That is not true. The data is more spread, and that will happen with an outlier. Between, um, or sorry, both the median and the mean change. Well, that's not true because only the mean has changed. <clears throat> so there is no change in the median mean. That is not true. There is no change in the spread. That is not true. But F is true. The median did stay the same and the mean changed. G is not true. The median did not change. So in a problem like this, we need to actually compare those measures of center um, with and without the outlier. Another way to show relationships of data is through a box and whisker plot, which you may have seen before. So let me draw attention, um, your attention to some of these features. Notice I have underlined minimum, median, and maximum. So this is a graph showing you the minimum value in the data set, which looks like it's about 4. The maximum value, which looks like maybe 20, um, 27. And then the middle number, so the middle of the data set, which looks like it is 21. Each section represents 25% of the data, so a quarter of the data points are in those four areas. The first quartile is the middle of the lower half, the median. The third quartile is the middle or the median of the upper half. <clears throat> 50% of the data is on either side of the median, and the vi visually the way we see that is the box. So notice the box in the middle. That draws your attention to the middle 50%. And remember, the median is in the middle. In this example, we can right away know that the mean would be less than the median because see how there is such a larger spread of numbers um, below the median. So that means more numbers below the median would pull our, our mean, our average, so that it would be lower than the median. All right, now in your pretest packet, look at question 11. <clears throat> so a police department captured 30 speeds on radar and organized um, their data in the box plot, box and whiskers, the same thing. So it looks like that the lowest speed was very slow, maybe like one mile per hour, and the highest was a little over 50. And then the middle speed, so not the mean, but the middle number is 30. What can we infer about the data? So one thing is you look at over the right, I listed that I know the median is 30. I also can infer that the mean will be less than 30 because there is more of my data below the middle um, speed than above it. So A, the mean is equal to the median, that would be a no. Oh, I can also infer that if I add 70, um, so I'll, I'll come back to that thought. So choice A, the mean is equal to the median. That would not be true. Choice B, the mean is probably less than 30. That's true because there's more of my data on the left half or lower than my median number. The mean is probably more. That is not true. D says, if an op officer captures an additional speed of 70, the mean must change. That is true, because 70 would be a new value. See how I have added on, onto our box plot? So that would pull our mean up, so it would have to change. Now, E, if an ops officer captures an additional speed of 70, the median must change. 
That is not true. We could still have a median value that would be at 30. <clears throat> All right, back to your notes. Now, a correlation is a relationship between one factor and another. So a positive correlation means that there is a strong relationship where if one factor is increasing, the other is also increasing. The more involved in school activities you are, the higher your, your grades. A negative correlation means that um, there is a strong relationship if one factor is increasing, then the other one decreases. So an example is the more oil in the country, the lower the price of gasoline. So, <clears throat> And then finally, no correlation means there is not a relationship between those two factors. The more green beans that you eat, the better your ability to drive a car. So they may just not have the, a, a relationship between the other. Now look at the graphs, okay? So we can see I have just hypothetical data on those graphs below and then some numbers. So first of all, look at the three graphs on your left. Notice as you look at them left to right, your eyes are drawn up and to the right, just like a positive linear slope. So on number one, that would be a perfect positive correlation. As our first factor was increasing, our, our second one was also increasing. Notice how they line up, so in a perfect line. <clears throat> the second one from the left would be a high positive correlation. So notice there is more space in between those data points, but your eyes are definitely drawn up and to the right. And then finally, the third one from the left your eyes are drawn up, up and to the left, but there's a lot of space between those points. So that would be a low positive correlation. And then in the middle graph, you can see your eyes aren't drawn either up or down as you look at it left to right. So that would be no correlation. Now on the right end, we have starting from the very far right, a perfect negative. So see how those points are lining up and falling and then a high negative and a low negative. Another way to do, well, first of all, let's look down at the bottom. The numbers underneath are a statistical measure called R. So this is a statistic that you're not gonna have to figure, you're just gonna be given, but you are gonna have to interpret it. So the closer that this number is to one or positive one, the stronger the relationship is. And then a one or a negative one is a, either a perfect positive correlation or a perfect negative correlation. And it was very strong. <clears throat> and then as the numbers become closer to zero, then that relationship weakens. So we would say numbers around 0.5 and negative 0.5 have a weak correlation, but they still correlate. And then an R value around zero, we would say has no correlation. Now go to number 16 in your pretest packet and let's use this information. So on the graph, we see a car sales business is analyzing the number of cards sold and the average daily temp. The data is shown on the graph below or to the right. <laughs> Notice right away, let's identify that correlation. Your eyes are drawn up and to the right in a very strong way. That is a strong positive correlation. <clears throat> so right away, we can just eliminate choice A because the temperature is giving an indication of the number of car sales. As the temperature increases, so does the sales. If the temperature is 50, the car sales will definitely be four cars. Well, we cannot say definitely. We could maybe say about, but since it says definitely, that is not true. Because it looks like at 50 degrees, there maybe also have been seven cars sold as well. The higher temperature is correlated to higher car sales and causes the car sales to increase. Well, it is correlated, but we cannot definitely say that that is the cause. So we have to go with D because that qualifies it. That, that temperature, it does correlate, but maybe it does not necessarily cause. Turn to number 28 now in your packet, and let's look at that one. 
So here we have just scatter plots without specific data connected to it that show relationships between two variables. So we're going to draw a line from the correct correlation coefficient, that's an R value, to each graph. So we need to figure out, do we have positive, negative, or no correlation, and is it strong or weak? So our first one, I would call a strong positive, because <clears throat> those points are fairly lining up and our R's are definitely being drawn up and to the right. Our next one would be a weak positive, because your eyes are drawn up slightly. Thirdly, a strong negative as you look at it left to right. And then finally, a weak negative. So now let's match values. Strong negative would be our number that's closest to positive 1, 0.8. Weak negative would be a number that is more around 0.5. So that would be 0.43. <clears throat> a strong negative would be our value that's closest to negative 1, which is negative 0.76. And then a weak negative would be a negative value that is closest to zero, which is negative 0.14. So the closer that our R value is to one or negative one, the stronger the relationship, the correlation is. Now let's turn to 24. Remember, you should be pausing this video as you work through so that you can get all the notes and practice working these problems. So we've got another graph here. It is comparing the number of missed school days to the math final exam grade. <clears throat> Notice there is a strong negative correlation. The more days you miss, so as that increases, your grade on the um, final math exam decreases. So let's look at each of these statements. The number of days missed has no correlation, so that simply is not true. A student with perfect attendance, so that would be zero, is expected to score approximately 98%. Um, yes, that is true, because see where that line is, right about that 98. C, however, is not true, because perfect attendance is scoring a, around a 98, not a 38. Now, to determine D and E, it says for each day a student is absent, the student's final score is expected to decrease approximately six percentage points. So I looked at my graph and I pulled out three points, and then I figured the slope. So the change in my Y value, my grade, compared to the change in days, and I got approximately round negative six. So that is true, that as my days increase, my exam score would decrease about six points a day. Now turn to nine, and let's try this one. So you can see there is a lot of data and statistics on the EOC. <clears throat> we have um, a residual. It's defined as the difference between the actual value of the dependent variable and the value predicted by the model which in this case is a line. So which graph best represents? So we want to just simply look and see how much space is between data points and the line. So I have plotted that out in red. So you can see the red lines show the distance between our model, which is the line and the data points. So the graph that has the smallest line, the smallest distance between the line and the points is D. So that one is our best model that reduces, minimizes what we call the residuals. That's the distance or the difference between the line and the points. All right, we have finally come to the end of our data and statistics review. If you want more practice, talk to your teacher or Google some of these topics.